from downtown Scranton, this is Northeast Current. WQPX invites you to join us as we explore public affairs, current events, and arts and culture in Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania. Now let's meet today's guests on Northeast Current. Welcome to Northeast Current. I'm your host today, Bernie Mayapolsky, and I'm here with Trish Dickert-Nievis and uh, Julie Schumacher-Cohen to talk about a really cool event called Global Tastes of Scranton. And I'm, I'm just going to ask you right away, could you give us a little overview about what is mm -hmm. Global Tastes of Scranton? Because this is really cool. Mm -hmm. Trish, because I know you know <laughs> oh, most yeah. about it. So Global Tastes of Scranton um, is a pop-up style um, event that we're going to be doing with two Syrian refugee women um, that have relocated into the Scranton area. I mean, that's really cool, isn't it? And, and where is it going to be? It's going to be at? So we're hosting it at a restaurant, Terra okay. Preta, which is 222 Wyoming Avenue in downtown Scranton. Um, the University of Scranton is facilitating all of the ticket sales. Um, okay. We have a, um, we've had some great planning meetings already, which has been really fabulous and um, interesting. Is some of the, you know, the words imagine. you say is yeah. like really fun and interesting. Um, but we've been working with a translator to work with the women to plan a really diverse menu. Okay. Um, so we have two Syrian refugee women. Two, is it that what it is? Mm -hmm. And they're going to, what, are they going to cook the whole meal? Are they going to plan the meal? How is it going to work? Yeah, they're involved at every step of the way. Okay. So, so far what we've come to um, is that we figured out um, what they each feel comfortable cooking. Okay. Um, so they each decided what traditional, authentic Middle Eastern dishes that they want to share with our community. And then we have, um, we have them figure out what the ingredients were, of course. Um, but it's myself and our chef who's really working with them to um, assist in the preparation of all the food while acquiring all of the ingredients, preparation of all the food, and then um, plating it. Has it been hard to find in. the ingredients? I mean, you know, what's really interesting. Um, there are some ingredients that they, they will be bringing themselves. Okay. <laughs> um, that yeah, some especially some of the um, spices that we're not familiar with in this area that we would be, yeah. that would be a little more energy for us to go and go yeah. out and source. So I mean, this mm -hmm. is a real authentic Syrian dish. This isn't like something you could just go to Wegmans or somewhere and get a, some hummus you and dip not, and this is, right. this is an authentic meal. <laughs> yeah, cooked. you will not find these dishes in Scranton. I mean, how cool yeah, is that? Where can you ever do that? Right, exactly. And even our chef is unfamiliar with not only the dishes, but the certain techniques and the ways to do so. This is a learning experience for us as well. We're really um, fortunate that we're able to to have this experience and and learn from these women as well. So, I mean, this is open to the public then, so people could come in and buy a ticket, I guess. Or how, how does that work? Mm -hmm. There'll be pre-sales of four tickets. Um, our restaurant seats at max capacity, about 75 to 80 people. Um, with leaving some room for the um, two women for their entire families to oh. attend the event. Um, you know, we're looking at about 50 seats. So I they're going to go fill really up pretty quick. I mean, I'm on a, I make sure I get a ticket yeah. out the end because I definitely want to do that. I mean, I think that's really neat. I mean, where can you, you'd have to go to Syria, I guess, to do that or have them come to your house. I mean, so, um, and Julie's here from the university. I know that um, you sort of started this idea, right? How did this, how did this idea get started? It really has been kind of an organic process. Um, the university has been very much engaged on the refugee crisis issue. Uh, we've been doing a lot of awareness events and just kind of talking about, you know, this is kind of a global issue, but particularly for Syria in terms of experiencing a civil war and why people are having to leave the country. Um, but then this, uh, I think it was in January, I saw an example uh, in New York City where they were having different refugee populations, women, cooking their food, and in their case, they started a new, they created a startup uh, new business and sold it as takeout. And so I think I shared it on Facebook and yeah. all sorts of people said, hey, we should try to do something yeah. like this in Scranton. Right, and it's a smart way to do it instead of trying to start a business, which would be difficult. Exactly, I mean, yeah, so we wanted have... to use an existing restaurant. Right. Terra Preta is just a wonderful downtown yeah. restaurant that was just, you know, I think it popped into everybody's mind and Trish obviously has been an amazing partner. And it's really a collaborative effort. There's a number of different partners that are, that yeah. are part of and it. So. I imagine this is a fundraiser. Yes, so it's a $30 ticket, and uh, the proceeds will benefit Catholic Social Services, which is the premier refugee resettlement okay, right. agency. Which is where we are right now, actually. Yes, exactly. I don't think I mentioned that. <laughs> That's where we are. We're in their offices. And, and so they're the ones services. who are actually uh, welcoming the refugees and helping them to 
uh, get settled into this to this region. So that, and then also we'll also go to support future events because we would like to showcase other uh, cuisines and cultures. Uh, oh, in, that's in, a great involving idea. Involving other um, populations in this. So there are area. other refugee populations besides Syrians and in, in Northeast PA and Scranton specifically, mm -hmm. right? They're Bhutanese, they're Congolese. Yes, there's a variety oh, wow, of, that's of other really refugee amazing. populations as well. And how many Syrians are there here? Do we know? I think are there's we? about um, 25. Oh wow! Um, okay. And we the, we just speaking with the women today when we asked them if they'd like to have their families present yeah. at the event. Um, there there'll be about 12 of them, two kind of extended okay. families who will be there. On so, the but day they're pretty the excited about this. They are. I think <laughs> it, our planning meetings have yeah. been wonderful. They yeah. they yeah. I think that one of our our hopes from the event is to really help people to see the refugee whole issue in a different way. These are people. These right, are human beings. Exactly. They right. want to, they have stories, they have right. children. They imagine what would happen to us if such a thing exactly. happened. Exactly. They right. had to leave, you know, in some cases in the middle of the night and, and right. leave their country. Um, but they're here now and they want to make their home in Scranton and, and they have a lot to share. And um, they've been not only, the event will obviously be focusing on the Middle Eastern cuisine, but we'll also have things about Syrian culture. Okay. Uh, we'll have, we, we're going to have Syrian music playing, um, maybe oh. even a little uh, dance uh, demonstration. <laughs> we talked about that today. So, so really kind of give people a, a picture of what Syri what you know, what the people of Syria, you know, what they have to offer and to bring. I think it's mm -hmm. a fantastic idea. Maybe Trisha, give mm -hmm. us an idea of some of the food that they're, like the actual, was it entrees? How will it be the, served it, actually? I right. Ask. So um, we have six um, tasting. So it's going to be like six okay. small plates. You're going to be able to try six different authentic dishes. Uh, the way they'll be served is really fun because they're going to be served on platters, family style. So you may also be sitting with a, amongst strangers that you've never met before, indulging right. in this really authentic experience. Sort of like going there and right. Right. So um, we're, it depends on how the reservations come in because we want to try to accommodate as many people as we can and make sure everybody's comfortable. Um, but in conversation with the two women, how they would prefer the meals to be served, that was their response is, okay. we prefer to have a platter on the table. That's traditionally how that's they, yeah, so that's that's how they the want idea. to present it. Traditionally how they do it, not a restaurant, right. people are taking orders. For, right. We really right. let them take the lead and said, you tell us, like, okay. we're here to help you. So it's kind of like if you went to a wedding <laughs> or a party and... Mm -hmm. right. Will there be, mm -hmm. what kind of drinks do they, do they have tea, what are they drinking? We're still kind of figuring that yeah. out, we're still trying to get there. Um, yeah, tea or coffee. So mm -hmm. I was in Turkey about. years ago, mm -hmm. everybody drank tea, 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 apple tea, everybody, mm -hmm. everybody drank tea. Yeah, mm -hmm. traditional Arab tea is often, um, is a tea with mint and, and sugar, yeah. so we talked about, we'll be talking with, with them about that as well. Yeah, that mm -hmm. would be really, I bet you it'll sell out really fast for us. So the tickets already on sale now? The tickets will go on sale in a couple of days. So. Oh, you better get ready. Uh, it's going to be like Rolling Stones tickets. Right. It's like line up. Line yeah. up and get online. I definitely want one. I have one already. <laughs> right, and you can buy them one at a time. Is that how it goes? You can buy them one at a time or you can buy okay. them in a set. And, and okay. like Trish said, if, you don't, if, you, if you're coming on your own, you will be grouped with other people because that's the idea is that the food will be served family style. Um, that we're also going to be having at the event um, a recipe card and some of those kind of key mm -hmm. item okay. points about uh, both Syrian culture and the refugee crisis. So we hope that that will kind of serve as a discussion a point for the table. Um, mm -hmm. and, the, and the women will be there. They'll be greeting the tables yeah. and they'll be there with their families And they, as well. they don't speak English? Uh, they mostly speak Arabic, yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So so we have been assisted. We have both a university and Catholic Social Services translator who's been going back and right. forth and, and helping us. That's going to be great. Let's tell them again. So when is it? It's May 7th, Saturday, May, May 7th. May 7th, Saturday, May 7th. Uh, 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Okay. At Terra Preta. At Terra Preta. Mm -hmm. And you will put on the screen where you can call for information and where you could um, buy tickets. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're going to um, have another guest join us, Sonia from Catholic Social Services, and she'll tell us more about the refugees and the work that they do and where the, um, you know, this is a fundraiser, so where the money goes for that. Welcome back to Northeast Current. We have a new guest with us, Sonia Sarner, and she is, are you the executive director? I wish. She is, she has something to do here with Catholic Social Services. I think she's the face of Catholic Social Services as far as I know. And um, so my question was, what was, the, um, what was the people's reaction when you asked them to, you know, to cook, cook were they surprised, were they happy? Uh, um, actually, I just spoke with the uh, um, Syrian women, and um, they are so excited to uh, participate in this event um, because they can uh, share part of uh, their culture, and um, they are so thankful that Scranton uh, welcomed them, 
uh, helped them to resettle here and uh, accepted them. So they are very, very happy to share this part of uh, their culture. I think that's great. And the people of Scranton and Northeast Pennsylvania have big hearts, so I think that's a, I think we're all happy to have them here and to help. So I also understand they get, they're, we're actually, they're going to get paid for this too, mm -hmm. right? So we're not just asking them to cook a free meal. Yeah, so from the, from the beginning, we, we really wanted to see it as an empowerment kind yeah. of uh, exercise. So um, they will be paid a stipend for participating. And, um, and hopefully, uh, there's other programs. Some of our, some of our co-sponsors are the Scranton Area Community Foundation and the Small Business Development Center at the University of Scranton. They both have programs to help women start small businesses. So right. that is one of our thinking, is if they enjoy this experience, that maybe they would even want to explore potentially opening a restaurant or some other kind of a business right. uh, down the road. That's right, and we, our viewers know about that because we did a we did a show on that. We had Francine Dujitz on. <laughs> so, um, so um, what? So, how many Syrian refugees are in the area? We have two large families uh, that are resettled in Wilkesbury area, in Wilkesbury, and we have two families resettled here in Scranton. Okay. So, a uh, total about uh, twenty six refugees, Syrian refugees. And so for the, how, how, it's, it's a long process, isn't it? It's very difficult to be able to be, to come. Yes. Uh, actually for the Syrian, uh, recently, um, Department of State um, uh, developed additional security system, uh, Iris Scan. So uh, they're going through up to, they're waiting for the whole process from the time they um, submit their application to arriving to the uh, United States up to three, four years. So right. it's a long process wow. for them. I mean, it's dangerous too. They have to spend three or four years in a war zone until they're able to, it is. to come over. It is. It's not like you just walk here. So then, you know, for people who think that it, that they have any worries about any, you know, refugees, I mean, we're, we're, we need more people. You know, I think it's good to have more diversity. That's what made our country and our area great. So I Actually, the refugees are uh, most varied immigrants coming to the United yeah. States. And right. Um, I can uh, tell that by my experience. Coming to the United States, I didn't come as a refugee, but uh, um, now comparing their process with my process, uh, it's nothing coming to America nine years ago and uh, now they're coming through this 13-step very right. process. And where are you from, Sonia? I'm from Bulgaria, Eastern Europe. Oh. I've been to Bulgaria. Maybe I'll tell you about it sometime. Oh, don't. <laughs> I don't want to hear about it. It was a nice. Lot, a lot of drinks, a lot of food, a lot yeah. of parties. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. It, was, it, was, I mean, it was good. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't realize that. How about that? So what, what other things does Catholic Social Services do besides, you know, help Syrian refugees? There's all, other refugees and other services I imagine you do? Yes. Uh, each year we submit a proposal uh, how many refugees we can accept depends of the, our resources, depends of uh, resources that Scranton can offer to our refugees. And um, usually for uh, many years we resettle 150 refugees. Uh, this year we, we uh, decided to increase uh, to uh, 200. Uh, we resettle refugees from Democratic Republic Congo, Eritrea, uh, Burma, Myanmar, um, Ukraine, Ukraine, uh -huh. uh, also refugees from Iran, Iraqi, Afghanistan. Uh, refugees from Iran and uh, from Afghanistan and Iraq are usually um, people who helped full-time employees who helped U.S. Army right. or U.S. government. They're very dangerous to us. Yes, there. yes. So um, also we have um, um, Somalis, Ethiopians. Still, we have a couple of Bhutanese are coming here, so we have refugees from all over the world. And we're integrating them all into the community. Yes. We can have a lot of dinners. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Gonna, this, could be a, this, this could go on for a couple of years, right? And we do hope that it will be a series. Uh, yeah. And so part of the proceeds will benefit future events because there are, as Sonia mentioned, there are many refugee populations. Right. And they're living all around us, but we don't necessarily know their stories or where they've come yeah. from. And, in this way, I think it's a lot of fun to just actually celebrate their so. And the food, I mean, foods. at least Middle yeah. Eastern food, we have some idea yes. of these yes. other ones. They sound yeah. really exciting, I mean. And they can tell story through the food, actually. Right. They can tell their story through the food that uh, they offer and they're mm -hmm. cooking. 
Yeah. Even in one of our in one of our first um, meetings with the women, we were talking about the quantities of how you know if we're going to have 80 people there, and uh, one of them through our translator, they said, well, you know, they're normally cooking often for huge for very large oh, families so in, in their town, so it was not it, it oh, was not, not a deterrent. Like I'm if it was for me, oh I cook a Thanksgiving dinner 20, yeah. <laughs> right. and I think imagine yeah. if I had to make it 80. Yes, it's definitely. I guess that'd be there. the only one you could do as a Thanksgiving yeah. for 80. You just get four more turkeys, I guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, God, um, thank God we're not refugees in other countries and we're, we'd be making Thanksgiving dinners. I mean, right? I mean, really, I think it's, um, I think it does show. And I think, that, and, and what if people in, this, people in this area, like I said, do have big hearts? How, how else can they help? Can they donate to Catholic Social Services? Absolutely. Uh, our program is funded uh, up to 90 days case management. But uh, people coming here, uh, refugees coming here, and they don't know English, and they have to start work as soon as possible. Because their first bill for their ticket to come here in the United States arrives um, three, four months after the arrival. So they have to pay this ticket bill. They don't have choice, but they have to start work. And the uh, main goal of our program is early economic self-sufficient, so they have to start work as soon as possible. Okay. So we uh, will appreciate any volunteers that are willing to teach our uh, families English. Um, we also will appreciate uh, donation of furniture, household items, okay. uh, money donations. So. Everything is, uh, whatever you can uh, donate or volunteers will be well, That's good to know. So do you just call you if you have a furniture, say, yes. or bring it over? Absolutely. You call you guys will pick it up? Absolutely, yes. That's what and we And where do they live? You find housing for them? Yes, we find, uh, we find housing for them and we furnish uh, their houses with mainly uh, donated uh, items. When they arrive here to the United States, they actually, they arrive only with one bag, nothing else. So, um, and they very much appreciate that um, they're accepted here in Scranton and uh, many times they, they uh, ask me, why Americans help us so much? Like, they're so surprised with hospitalities and um, uh, attention. Uh, they're yeah. very, very grateful and thankful. I, I wish the rest was bigger. We could have all the other refugees come to, the, to this dinner. Wouldn't that be cool? Mm -hmm. If we have them all together somehow. Maybe a future. Event. Yeah, maybe in the future. Actually, we, uh, we're going to organize, uh, celebrate for mm -hmm. first time in Scranton area, in Scranton, the World Refugee Day. Uh, we're going to celebrate on oh. June 26th in Nayak Park. So, oh, uh, that's good. So you, they'll come, most of the families, we think? Yes, yes. Oh, I wanna, we should do another show about that, maybe. I think I'd like to go to that. Because I'm very interested in, from what you said, I didn't realize there were so many different you know, it's communities here. Yeah. I really don't see them. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I don't, I don't know. I feel like I'm out and about, but I don't see them in the public. <laughs> it's not like we're in Manhattan where people are walking up and down the street, but th so they're working at places and they're... They're working, yes. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, all of our refugees are working two jobs. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. And they live in the city, mostly in the city of Scranton? Yes. Yes, right. we have to start to refugees. So they're paying taxes in the city of Scranton. Oh yeah, they're paying taxes. Yeah, that's they, pretty good, right? They like to buy houses, cars. Yeah, sure, so. right. So they're working and so buying houses and getting houses on the tax mm -hmm. rolls in the city of Scranton. It's a pretty there's, good deal. There's many families that live here in Southside, also in the Hill section. I live yes. in the Hill section. Yeah. Their children are in the schools in Prescott Elementary. Um, that's great. How, you know, I mean, people from um, California aren't moving to Scranton that much, right? So this is great. <laughs> I, I mean, really, I, when we're increasing our, our population, our tax, our taxes. Well, we so. had, you had a, uh, one of your colleagues, Om Timsina from the Bhutanese community in Scranton. He spoke at the university last week and he said how grateful and how wonderful they found Scranton to be because of, of job opportunities. Absolutely, and the, yeah. The, 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 their ability to buy homes in the area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we resettled win -win. refugees from uh, a Bhutanese refugee here oh. and many secondary refugee Bhutanese came to join their families, uh, their relatives, because Scranton is a great uh, place for them. They uh, jobs that uh, they don't choose any jobs, but they are jobs. So um, 
crime is low and yeah, Scranton is uh, a great place yeah. for them. I bet Pope Francis is happy about all this because I know he was interested in <laughs> how Americans helping. Yeah, so Catholics. that's really what, what was one of the things that got the university involved in the issue in the fall. The Pope talked very, you know, I think eloquently, especially when he came to the United States to speak to Congress about how we really need to consider how we can assist all of us uh, with the global refugee crisis. Um, the Syrian civil war has caused millions of Syrians Terrible. to leave their country. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he said, he's, you know, he, he encouraged Jesuit and Catholic institutions, but all people of goodwill to think about how we can respond in ways that are humane, and fraternal and just, those are some of the words that he used. So that was something that we considered at the university and immediately when we started to think about what we could do, we, we, we partnered with Catholic Social Services. So this is really an outgrowth of this, but I think all the fact that there are so many different community partners just shows that really yeah. our community is coming around this. Yeah, I mean, I think it's gonna, be, I, can, I can't wait to go. So let's tell the people again, so it's May 7th at one o'clock, that's when it is, but there's not gonna be any tickets available at the door. No tickets at the door. <laughs> no, right. because they're going to be already be sold already. We can't even do like a second serving. It's going to have to be one and done. So you're going to have to get your tickets. There are really only 50 tickets available. I mean, that's not very many because I already have two. <laughs> 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 so um, and so it's um, and it's at Terra Preta, which is in downtown Scranton on the 200 block of Wyoming Avenue. If you for those of you who may not, it used to be the Ritz for the old timers. It was the Ritz movie theater. And your family also owns Carl. Carl, their family also owns Carl von Luger State House too. So, good Scranton, um, good Scranton people, helping out uh, the newcomers and um, Catholic Social Services. And um, I hope to see you guys all there because I'll definitely be there. Keep that page for now. Oh, that is clipper again. Some it's a, empowers the women, mm -hmm. and, and there's. Um, Sorry, I lost it there for a second. Where, where do we want to go now? You can say one point. <laughs> what? Get, well, one point to pay some money. Is that good? We're good? We got to do, well, we do it in time, pretty good. Excellent. <laughs> you feel that table already? No, like e like everything's vibrating by me here. Maybe it's just I must be on something. Yeah, all right. I know it's just weird. Yeah, no. Pope Francis is channeling himself. Oh, right. <laughs> everything's vibrating. You could say one point. <laughs>